Gary Thompson is on your right. Daryl Arrow is on your left. Two very skilled players off of their two by. Should be a lot of fun to watch. For errors, by the way, typically playing Scape Shift. We've seen that a lot. I know we had a deck tech with him at Grand Prix Richmond involving Scape Shift last year, but he's made the switch over to Twin. And you see Thompson is taking some mulligans here. He's going to be on five cards. We'll see if he can find a hand that he likes. Looks like he has a Raging Ravine waiting for the green light to say go. We'll be underway here in round number three from Charlotte right now as Raging Ravine on the battlefield tapped. We're going to go Errors way. See what his Grix's Twin deck can put together. I know this deck has been a labor of love here for Jerry the last couple of weeks. He's been posting a lot on Twitter about it, been streaming a lot of magic online. Uh, feels very comfortable with this list coming into the event. An island and a Serum Visions here for Errors. He will draw a card. Just one, Daryl, and then scry two. And uh, Jerry is definitely ready for the the fast mana land strategies of the format. Three main deck copies of Full Minute Mage and two main deck copies of Ghost Quarter. That is very telling, three main deck copies. That Four. is pretty insane. There's a Lightning Bolt for Dark Confidant. We're going to head back Jerry's way now. Ooh, get him. Oh, boy, not this already. <laughs> I, thought, I thought this only happened in Legacy. <laughs> now, here you go. Oh, Jerry's got a lot of stone rains in his deck. <laughs> a land destruction strategy, eh? Listen, you cut him off red. You beat him down with Raging Yeah, <laughs> beat him down with a Raging Ravine. There is Fulminary Mage to take care of that Sulfur Falls. Oh. Yes! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. The land destruction spell taught Daryl Arrows a lesson. We'll see if he can draw a land. There's an island. Uh, that's not red mana. Yeah, Arrows is a three-color deck after all. Maybe it is time to fire up the old Raging Ravine and get to work. Jerry's going to sacrifice some wooded foothills. We'll see if it's a <laughs> Ravnica Duel or a Basic, as Patrick is very enthused now. Oh, uh, yeah. I love stone raiding someone's one non-basic and just hoping that there aren't more coming down the pipeline. That Raging Ravine's coming into the red zone. Going to get a counter, of course. When you do fire up the Ravine, it will get a counter when it does attack. Eris with a mountain off the top of the deck. He's back in it now. Yep. Pretty lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do get to draw a card every turn. It's one of the rules of the game. Yeah. Now Thompson might have to change his game plan a little bit. He's playing it's a blue-red deck. Don't know how much he can change. We'll see what his hand does look like. He's on five cards, and I think he's very mana-heavy. I, I, he does have Abrupt Decay, so we can pass and... Well, what's interesting here is I think I, I actually like just firing up this. And the see Rexler can lock it down because you know he's playing off the top of his deck. So if Daryl does peel Red Source and has Splinter Twin in his hand, eh, good beats. Yep. I think it's pretty unlikely, though. Some risk here from Jerry's side, but I, I agree with you. The odds are low enough. Daryl needs to have red mana untapped and the twin in hand to really punish Jerry. Jerry's certainly not going to be sitting there. He's not going to win the game by sitting there doing nothing. It's very true. He's going to sacrifice Bloodstained Mire here. Thin out the deck a little bit. Get a, I imagine, a Ravnica non, a Ravnica non basic. And he'll go with an Overgrown Tomb. So colors and mana, not much of an issue here. Now he's just got to draw some action. Now, Jerry actually has Abrupt Decay in hand, and what he had done last turn when the when his Raging Ravine got tapped was, you know, play the land in Abrupt Decay, the Exarch. But I think he really wants to get Daryl here. He wants to try to recoup the card disadvantage from the from the Mulligans here. He was willing to risk losing the game on the spot if Daryl drew the land had Splinter Twin in hopes of getting it somewhere else down the line. Yep, Daryl does have another tap effect. It's Pestermite, pass the turn back. Jerry's draw for the turn was a copy of Terminate. So Terminate and Abrupt Decay, the cards in Thompson's hand. Don't have a great look at Eris' hand, but doesn't matter too much as he comes across here for some damage. Terminate's going to go after the old Pestermite here. That'll resolve. Exarch will get in for a point of damage. The follow-up here for Eris. Perhaps a Snapcaster Mage? It is. He'd like to flashback Serum Visions, and he will. So he'll draw a card, and then, of course, Scry 2. We'll see where those cards are headed. And you can see, uh, typically I like Jun's matchup against Twin game one because Twin is all in on assembling the combo. Yes, you play with some Tassigers and, you know, you can try to win it in some secondary modes, but you are really just trying to get Splinter Twin on something. And Jun, with all this removal, especially Abrupt Decay, makes that really problematic. Here's going to play his team fence. They'll enter the battlefield tap to pass the turn back over to Thompson. Thompson going to fire up Raging Ravine, come across here for five points of damage as the rain will get a counter. He'll pass the turn back. Thompson did draw a copy of Dark Confidant for the turn, but does not feel comfortable playing that right now in the face of what could be a Splinter Twin. Yep. 
Three points of damage coming across here for Errors. So he'll play a copy of Scalding Tarn. Daryl with a lot of mana available now, so Jerry might have to reevaluate some things. So Liliana the Veil is an interesting draw. So I don't know if Liliana and Dark Hoffman on this turn is better than just firing up the Ravine once again. There is a point where Jerry's hand gets bottlenecked with enough spells that he just kind of has to start casting whatever he can cast. I don't know if we've necessarily hit that point. And this is the one turn where you've seen Thompson actually take a step back and reevaluate some things. Previous turns, it was pretty simple. Just fire up Raging Ravine and keep going to work. But he's going to lead off with the Liliana, perhaps trying to draw a counterspell out here from Eris. Not sure if Jerry actually wants to tick this up or not. This might simply be a, a card where he says, I, I, I kind of hope you Cryptic Command this. Yep. Because if Jerry fires up the Raging Ravine and attacks, Cryptic Command's really bad for him. There is Cryptic Command. And it would be Counter Bouncer Raging Ravine. So going to do a lot of the work that the Ravine has done here. Thompson going to play a copy of Dark Confidant. Play the Ravine again and pass the turn back with Abrupt Decay. Still at the ready. That's the last card in Thompson's hand. Air is going to sacrifice the Scalding Tarn. Get a land out of his deck and move forward here in just a moment. Really, Sitting at 10 life at this point. Really tight sequencing there from Jerry. Floats the mana here, so he's able to deploy Dark Confidant, replay his Raging Ravine, and still have Abrupt Decay at the ready. He is very, very well tested with Johnny. As you did mention, he's been streaming it a lot. He's also put together a few articles on the previous side of Star City Games for it as well. You got a Lightning Bolt to take care of the Dark Confidant after the attack for three there from Errors, and we head back Thompson's way. Abrupt Decay and hand Liliana the draw. Very interesting here. Daryl almost kind of playing the post board strategy against Jun in game one, yep. where you become a control deck and less. there's a lot less emphasis on the combo here. And Jerry on a five-card hand really struggling to keep up just with Snapcaster Mages and Cryptic Commands. Liliana and Abrupt Decay in hand, Raging Ravine with those lands. However, Raging Ravine is now a three-power creature, so Snapcaster Mage on Lightning Bolt does make things a little bit ugly here. That'll be a copy of Go for the Throat to take care of the Raging Ravine. What's interesting here, you find Go for the Throat in the main deck. And that's an interesting removal spell to be playing because this particular format, Affinity is a deck that does exist. Yep. I know uh, Patrick Dickman, Modern Specialist, was talking about people playing that card in Grace's Win this weekend. Ultimate Term Price as well. Yep, over yep. Terminate. There are different costs for whichever two-man removal spell you want to play. Go for the Throat, of course, can't kill Arcbound Ravager and friends. Ultimate Price can't either. Mm -hmm. Terminate can kill them all, but does stretch the mana a little bit. There's a remand. And right now, what you're seeing is you're seeing Twin, as you mentioned, just play a normalized game. Yeah, and I, I like what Daryl's doing in this. He's, he's kind of saying this game, I can beat you with what's on the board and with the counter spells. And if you ever tap out to try to, to catch up in terms of efficiency and what's going on with the mana and, and cards in play, then I'm threatening to untap and kill you. There's Liliana. And this is Jerry kind of saying, my position's not tenable here, and I need to get something on the table. There's Colagon's command. Going to bring back the Snapcaster Mage. Jerry knows he's beat at this point. Daryl drew out of his mana issues, had plenty of cards. Yep. And now you get Colagon's command working with Snapcaster Mage. We all know how good that one is. And Eris is able to win game one here over Jerry Thompson. Grixis Twin up a game here over Jund. And, you know, in that spot, Daryl can even play around something like a main deck murderous cut in Jerry's list. He doesn't even have to go to the kill at that stage. He can simply grind him down with the card advantage, and, and Jerry was beat on two fronts at that point. The sideboard is where we're going to go, and we'll take a look at Jerry Thompson's sideboard here and see what options he has brought to the table, including the two Blood Moons, a copy of Thoughtseize, two Nile Spell Bombs, two Night of Souls Betrayal, two Choke, a Ghost Quarter, an Unravel the Aether, two Golgari Charms, two Thrak Tusk, and a copy of Colgon's Command. Well, it, it's interesting here to see how much respect Jerry has for the combo in the post-board post games. Something like Night of Souls Betrayal does lock out the combo if it stays in play, because you can't have a Pester Might in play, and Deceiver Ex Exarch loses all power. That card does not seem good to me in most of the post-board games, because they all have, will have de-emphasize the combo, but if Jerry thinks it's hanging out, you might see it stay in. I think the additional copy of Thoughtseize alongside the two copies of Choke will definitely come in. And this might be a matchup with, with Daryl on the three-color build where Blood Moon is something Jerry goes to. Blood Moon is something that Daryl could go to depending on how 
you know, he kind of builds mana base because he does have two Blood Moons in his sideboard as well. He's also got two copies of Kerados Goddess Storms, an additional copy of Tasker to go along with the two in the main deck, a Spell Sky, two Anger of the Gods, a Thought Season Negate, a Dispel Dismember, two Jace Architect of Thought, and an Engineered Explosives. You see the two Planeswalkers and then the two copies of Gyarados, which is kind of a Planeswalker. Typically what we see twin players against Jun, they move away from Splinter Twin. They just go towards these bigger effects that are going to stay in play. Yeah, give me the creature removal spells, give me the copies of Jace, the Karanos, the sources of card advantage, and try to convert here as much as possible into a Grixis control deck rather than a Grixis win deck. Because of this kind of cat and mouse game, it's interesting to see how much anti-combo measures Jerry is going to bring in or leave in the deck. The Knight of Souls Betrayal to me is an interesting swing card in the matchup for this reason. Does Jerry think it's gone out of the deck entirely? Well, then there's no point bringing it in because Knight of Souls Betrayal is pretty bad against Tassiger and Karanhos. But he thinks if Daryl has left in some amount of the combo or is leaving it entirely, maybe that card becomes attractive. And there's a lot of cards throughout Jerry's list, these kind of removal spells that are really powerful if Daryl has kept in the combo and not really appropriate otherwise. It's always interesting, this little game of cat and mouse, and if Daryl's going to leave in the combo or not, as you did mention, that's what kind of makes Twin very, very interesting. It's very easy to say, you know, you want to board this stuff out because of Abrupt Decay and Terminate and discard spells and all of that stuff. But I think about the Season 2 Invitational we watched last weekend when Kyle Bogmies was playing against Kevin Gerhardt, one of the last rounds of Modern. Bogmies, of course, a Pro Tour runner-up at Pro Tour San Diego 2010 with Jund. He knows what Jund's all about. And even though he was playing Grix's Twin, he actually left in some of the combo and actually killed Gerhardt with it Game 3. I I've seen some... Grixis players or twin players take the philosophy of Pestermite isn't that shabby against Jund because they don't block flyers very well and you sort of become a damage race deck and uh, post board and uh, Pestermite's not bad in damage races in general and you can leave in a little bit of the Splinter Twin combo if you're living in Pestermite anyway. I've also seen, pe seen people take the philosophy of just get all 10 of those cards out of your deck. It's too hard to win that kind of fight against Jund and sideboard in all of your Karanoses and your Batter Skulls and your Jaces, whatever you had to bring to the table, and don't try to win that fight at all. And uh, the fact that there is debate, even amongst very good twin players, about what you're supposed to do, to me, is one of the more fascinating elements of modern. Well, we'll see how Eris is opted to sideboard. Thompson as well. Again, that Knight of Souls betrayal should be interesting. I think, of course, Choke will be in the deck, a little more discard. And will either player bring Blood Moon to the table? It's weird because this is the kind of matchup where both players could justify bringing in Blood Moon. But it seems like it's a mistake. Someone messed up somewhere. Both people are bringing in Blood Moon. Yeah. Right? That, that, yeah. That's how that card kind of feels? Uh, definitely. And I, it would be fun if both players just kind of flashed their Blood Moons to right. each other and then kind of shuffled their 15 cards. And it's like, well, I got him, and I know you've got him, and I don't think you're going to bring him in, and yeah, whatever. I'm just search up some basics, and let's move on with life. Both players have enough basics to be able to operate through a Blood Moon. But, of course, that's because they have Blood Moons in their board. Well, you know, the, the, the flip side of it is Daryl's only got four islands in his in his deck, and if Jerry resolves a Blood Moon, Cryptic Command is probably off the table. Yep. On the other side of things, Jerry has Raging Ravines, and so even sitting aside the color mana issues, it's attracted to shut those down as well. Jerry going to take another mulligan here again. He did mulligan to five, game number one. He's going to be taking a look at six cards here in just a moment as Ares has kept his opening hand. He's happy with what he's found. John, you have to imagine, going to be a pretty popular deck this weekend. I know it didn't put up the best performance last weekend on the Open Series. Josh Rabbit's making the top four of the Season 2 Invitational with Jun before being dispatched by Chris Van Meter. But, you know, Jund is this deck where you think of Reed Duke, a player who's always been playing Jund in Modern, and has always said, you know, it's just a pretty cozy deck to play. Among very serious, very competitive players, I think Jund's going to be a popular choice this weekend. I think among the more casual kind of sampling crowd, you're not going to see a lot of jump because this is one of the more expensive decks in modern to put together. Liliana the Veil, Tarmogoyf, Dark Confidant, the mana base. This is, yeah, this is not an expensive, a, a cheap deck rather to build. Let's see if Thompson can find six cards that he is happy with. As Ares will wait patiently with his twin deck. Part of the reason you find a card like Unravel the Aether in Thompson's sideboard is for a card like Karanos. Mm -hmm. There's a Blood Crypt that'll enter battlefield tapped and pass the turn back. And the Unravel has likely come in as well because uh, it's a reasonable card against the combo and Karanos is a very popular sideboard card for these twin decks. Watery Grave is step one here for Ayers. We'll see what Lanny wants to search up and see if he's got maybe a discard spell or a Serum Visions to begin. And what will be interesting at this point is to see how much effort do both of these players put in fetching for basics here. Uh, these are both decks that probably have Blood Moons throughout the 75. There's no guarantee that they brought them in, though. And so are people willing to concede a little bit of 
their ease of casting their spells by fetching basic lands and playing around a possible blood moon. We'll go to Thompson's way now. Picked up a copy of Thoughtseize. He'll lead off with Inquisition. Blood Moon's gone. Well, that answers that question. <laughs> Jerry <laughs> says, you leave that there. Let me write your hand down. And Daryl's hand, actually, for Blood Moon, I mean, you see all the basics, so he was good to go on that front. Going to leave him with a Cryptic Command and just a bunch of lands right now, honestly. Yeah. Drew two of the islands on top of the basic he could fetch for, so he was actually good to cast Blood Moon and still be able to cast Cryptic Command this game. Not the easiest thing to do. Now here's thoughts. He's to take care of the Cryptic Command. And now it's, all right, let's see what you draw. Because Jerry has cleaned out the hand. This is uh, this is a situation where a card like Liliana can really do some damage. Yeah, not necessarily good against Chris's twin game one, because it's it's a lot of mana to tap out for and it's ineffectual against the combo. But post board, when Grixis twin looks more like Grixis control, Liliana can be very potent. Vernon Catacombs will be sacrificed. We'll see if Jerry wants to search for a basic or non-basic. He's gonna go with basic for us. And this is that kind of Blood Moon battle. Look at the player's lands. Yep. Blood Moon is bad on both sides now. So I, I, if we do go to a third game, I wonder if Ares maybe reaches for his sideboard and says, well, you know, Jerry's pretty smart. He's not going to fall for this. I'm going to get this out of my deck. And now here is Liliana. Well, there's still no guarantee that Jerry gets a draw that allows him to function through a Blood Moon. Uh, obviously, it helps him to know about it. But if Jerry doesn't draw fetch lands, his deck is mostly non-basics, only a couple of basics in the list. So if he's on Black League Cliffs and Ravnica Duel lands, he can still get caught by it. Liliana takes up to four. Thompson discards a Black League Cliffs. And Ares just cards a watery grave. Ares again with quite a few basics in hand. Two more islands over there. He's going to sacrifice a Scalding Tron. We'll see what Lanny wants to search up as he is missing red mana at this point. Could be a Blood Crypt, could be a Steam Vents. He'll go with just a basic mountain, however. And we'll see what the follow-up is here for Ares. Certainly feels like he'll be doing something right now. There's a Blood Moon. No muss, no fuss. Yeah, I mean, might as well, I suppose. Stomping Ground's going to end their battlefield tapped, but it is just at this point a mountain. Thompson will play a copy of Nile's Spell Bomb. And that's going to be there to remove the graveyard from error so that Jerry doesn't have to worry about a card like Tassiger at this point. Yeah, that's very nice sequencing, too. It'll also allow Jerry to get his hand empty. So Liliana was a one-sided discard as opposed to symmetrical. Terminate in hand now for Thompson. He'll tick up the Liliana and discard Verdant Catacombs while Ayers will be discarding a copy of Dismember. Pass the turn back. The big question here, I think, right now, if you're Jerry, is Ayers is going to, is going to excuse me, cast their Visions and Scry now, putting both cards to the bottom, is do you want to get Liliana 7 before going Ultimate, or you just say, let's just cash it in now? No, well, this is not a board where going Ultimate with Liliana is going to do very much, and this is shaping up to be a game that goes on for a very long time. Certainly Jerry, feels Jerry's not got, got no pressure, and if I were him, I would just keep plussing. Maybe next turn you go Ultimate, but there's no rush to do anything. Daryl's board is not very good, and this is shaping up to be a very long game. Ares just cards a lightning bolt to Liliana. Leads me to believe he's got something good going on in his hand. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't appear as though Jerry is in much of a rush to uh, activate the Liliana ult yep. here. Keep taxing those resources. Hey, I picked up a copy of Choke. You have to have a conversation with these players about these black border chokes, I yeah. think. Showing too much respect. Really, it's, it's really true. And now Jerry's in this awkward spot where both of his cards are really juicy. He doesn't want to discard either of them. This may prompt Jerry to make a move with Liliana. Well, here's the thing. See. Here's the thing. With Liliana, you don't have to use you it. You can still just say go. Yeah. That's true. We can see Jerry deploy Choke this turn and just pass the turn back. He's got a terminate in hand. As you mentioned, both cards are good. And you might not have any interest in actually activating the ultimate on Liliana. Or I think we could see him get a little crafty with the ultimate on Liliana. Yeah, I think a Liliana split of Island Island against the other three cards here with Choke in hand is pretty attractive. Yep. Looks like Daryl's going to float a black mana. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah! Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I love it. Jerry with so many stone rains so far. It's been great. <laughs> Man after my own heart. You wonder if Daryl picks up on this if you're making this split of, okay, do you want me, do you want to choke me? Maybe that's the thought process. Now here's choke. Pass the turn back. Errors with just red and black mana now. And it's not like Daryl has a lot of blue mana left. He only has two basic islands left in his deck, and he has a Blood Moon in play. Yeah, this is, this is a really bad spot for Daryl. 
and the islands that he does draw, assuming he does draw them. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> Jerry, <laughs> Jerry, Jerry just going to uh, so point good. to Blood Moon. Now here's Kolagon's command. So that's going to take care of Liliana and have to discard his Terminate. Jerry is in a very enviable position right now. All he needs now is a creature. Let's say he were to draw a Dark Confidant this turn. But all he can do is pass the turn back. Perhaps Errors was thinking for a moment that he could sacrifice the Scalding Tarn. Maybe that's why he kept with the split, but that was not the case. And I think a lot of Daryl's draws here are going to be dead ones. Yeah, I mean, he needs to draw an island really to get anything going. I suppose Tassiker is still a promising draw, but he is drawing pretty slim at this point. And there's just not a lot of cards with text boxes left in his deck. Thompson having an issue here as well. Niles Spellbomb is one spell that Jerry can play. He's going to cash that in and draw a card and move the graveyard. But he's got a copy right now of Liliana in hand. Only one Swamp in play. And that's why you saw Jerry there just crack the Nile spell bomb right away, because he is vulnerable to Tassiker. He's aware of that, and Daryl with no graveyard now can't get a Tassiker into play. So both players are going to play draw, go and play a bunch of non-basic lands, which are just mountains right now. Thompson will fire off a thought seize, get a better look at Error's hand. You have to imagine a bunch of uncastables over there, and that's the case. Snapcaster Mage of Serum Visions. Go for the throat and lightning bolt are cards that can be cast, and we'll see exactly which one of these Thompson wants to take. I'm guessing go for the throat. Yeah, uh, at this point, I think Jerry is trying to play the game, assuming that Daryl's just not going to have blue mana. If Daryl does draw an island, though, suddenly his hand becomes pretty potent. Yep. Snapcaster Mage, some removal spells. Well, potent-ish. Yeah, I mean, it's still it's still not great. but yeah, Because he, he only gets one use of those blue cards because of yep. choke. So it, it, it becomes potent-ish. Now, if you're Jerry, the, the card you're looking to draw here is Tarmogoyf. Yep. Or just anything. Yeah. Real, real, I mean, I, I suppose... Dark Confidant is so good because of Lightning Bolt. But. Now, Jerry does have another copy of Thought Seas in his hand, so he can kind of clear the way for a card like Dark Confidant. And he did draw a copy of Unravel. Oh, boy. He drew Unravel the Aether, which could turn on the lands again because he can take care of Blood Moon, but then that Ooh. turns on Daryl's hand. Big draw here for that Jerry. That is a big draw. The second Swamp in his deck. Now he can play Liliana. And trust me, he's got plenty of cards to discard. No two ways about it. Blood Moon is stinking up the joint for Daryl this oh, game. Oh, yeah. Daryl going to discard, <laughs> <laughs> discard Jace Architect of Thought. We're a little uh, ways away from that one. There's a Steam Vents. That's just a mountain. Thompson will draw. Does have a copy of Kolagon's Command in hand at this point. Looks like maybe two copies of that card, along with that Unravel the Aether. Now, of course, Jerry has to decide, do I want to even use Liliana at this point? What's interesting is Jerry was just playing his lands mm -hmm. when we were in that stage of the game where both players were just drawing through Blood Moon to find action. Perhaps maybe he wanted to hold some of those so he had some discard fodder if he ever found that second swamp. Yeah, I mean, it's the odds are so slim that that comes up, but now we're in that spot. Yeah. Because it doesn't seem like he has a lot of interest in discarding Kolagon's command on, or Unravel the Aether. Though he will take up, and he will discard Kolagon's command. If you're Ares, you can't feel good about that. No, it's not a good sign. That's a card that Thompson can cast, and he's electing just to discard it. It will be heading back Thompson's way, I think, in just a moment here. Though Ares is giving his turn some thought. Something that stood out to me in the Columbus Invitational was I felt that people were a little too aggressive siding in Blood Moon. And this feels like the type of game I've seen before, where it's equally disruptive to the deck casting plus, arguably at this point more disruptive, yep. and not really locking the other player up doing very much. Two Lightning Bolts are going to take care of Liliana. Air is a little afraid of the ultimate of that card. So he will fire away and get the powerful Planeswalker off the table. Figure out what Lance he wants to use to cast it, perhaps. He'll go with a Mountain and a Scalding Tarn, which of course is a Mountain. Thanks to Blood Moon. And I'll move forward accordingly. Again, airs with only two islands left in the deck. Here's three mana. Let's make it five. There's a copy of Tassiger. If he only wants to delve away one card, which is the Jace Architect of Thought. Does Thompson have a removal spell for that card? It does not appear to be the case right now since Liliana is no longer on the table. Does have a copy of Kolagon's command in hand still. I'll have to draw a card. Picked up a copy of Bloodstained Mire. And this is really the one card that was left that Jerry was vulnerable to. Yep. Looked like he had pretty good protection with Liliana at six, but Daryl with two lightning bolts took care of that. And now 
uh, Tassig are giving Daryl a glimmer of hope in this game. Now, Jerry doesn't have to worry about the ability because no blue mana out there for errors, but he's got to find a removal spell. Tarmogoyf isn't too bad. That's, I mean, that's the draw you mentioned before, especially yep. paired with Colgon's command. It's yep. going to be hard for Daryl to slog through this. We'll get the sizing check on that Tarmogoyf in just a moment. But there is an artifact and a planeswalk in the graveyard, so it's going to be much bigger than normal. In modern, you'll find the Tarmogoyf is typically a 3-4 or a 4-5, but it's hard for it to break past that. That's part of the reason that you're going to find a card like Nile Spellbomb in Thompson's deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a 6-7 right now. Take Usually that, you'll Tassiger. see in a game like this, you'll instant sorcery, land creature are very common. And then sometimes some of the more esoteric card types will show up. And the game's gone on long enough and Jerry with an artifact and enchantment, uh, Planeswalker in the graveyard. And now Jerry has a Planeswalker on the battlefield. He drew a copy of Lily out of the Veil. He's going to make Eris sacrifice a Tassiger. And Tarmogoyf coming across for six points of damage. Eris conveniently at 12. It's a two-turn clock. Thrag tusks the draw. You can tell right now Thompson has a sideboard plan for this matchup. If Jerry has brought in Thrag Tusk, to me that indicates that he thinks that Daryl has no element of the combo left. Yep. Thrag Tusk is pretty heinous if someone is threatening Splinter Twin plus Deceiver Exarch. But if you think they've just turned into a pure control deck, Thrag Tusk is very good in those kind of games. It's very telling, right? And Eris isn't going to see that Thrag Tusk. But it's very telling for us here in the booth and you guys at home that Jerry has decided, okay, I don't think you have twin pieces left in your deck, so you want to go along with me yep. with your Karanosis? I have Unravel Aether for that, and I have Liliana to go along, and I have Thraktos to go along, which, as we know from standard years past, blue decks, they don't do very well against Thraktos. It, it's, a, it's a very bold move on Jerry's side because Thraktos is very susceptible to Jerry getting killed uh, by the combo on the way back if it's still in the deck. But if he's confident Daryl's cut it entirely, then it becomes a very powerful card for the matchup. And that's part of the guessing game that goes on when Jund and Twin square off, is do you respect the possibility to combo at all, or do you just turn into a completely different deck? And you can see some of the cards right now that Jerry has sideboarded out of his deck, like Lightning Bolt. Mm -hmm. That's long gone. Modern special removal spell is in his sideboard right now. Both players going back to the drawing board. I think of the Bogomies versus Gerhardt match that we mentioned uh, a little bit ago, and also when Bogomies was playing against Josh Ravitz in the top eight of the Season 2 Invitational, every game took those 15 cards, shuffled them in. Yep. Keep your opponent guessing. We don't really see errors doing that right now. Yeah, I think it's very important with Twin in these kind of matchups where you, have some, you could have no combo, some combo, or all of it still, to shuffle 15. You, you, I, I think by siding in two or three cards, you're potentially giving someone as sharp as Jerry, some pretty valuable information. Well, both these players are going to shuffle up here for game number three. If you are just joining us, we are very appreciative for having you today on a Saturday. Got over 12,000 people watching a little modern action here between Jerry Thompson and Daryl Errors. Of course, Editor Phil's Patrick Sullivan here in the booth. We've got Ken Crocker, Nick Miller, and the sideboard along with the rest of the SCG Live crew bringing you modern action all weekend long. Nine rounds today, six tomorrow before we do cut to a top eight. We'll work our way through bunch of elimination rounds and eventually crown a champion here. Your tweets are appreciated at SCG Live, hashtag GP Charlotte all week long. Of course, you can send them directly to me at Cedric A. Phillips or directly to Patrick at Basic Mountain. Lots of deck techs coming for you guys as we make our way through these rounds, of course. We've already had Brian Braun doing in his Abzan Collected Company deck. We've had Brian Kibler and his Bant Collected Company deck. I'm sure there are some pretty awesome brews out there among these 3,000 players. So we'll have some action for you there in the sideboard. A lot of action in front of us as well as we make it through nine rounds today. And we've got a game three between Jerry Thompson and Daryl Eros for you in just a moment. Yeah, once we get into the fourth round, obviously we have the players coming off the three buys, and we'll have an official head count for you as well as we get that information in the fourth round. And that Mataj Zadokai watching at home, game number two. He said, this game is pretty sweet, that Blood Moon game that we just watched. <laughs> Always good to hear from Big Z. Yeah, big shout out. I know One of my like favorite he, commentators. Really absolutely. enjoy your work. He likes a Jun deck as well. I wouldn't be surprised if he were playing that this particular weekend if he were here in Charlotte. I know he'll be stateside soon enough. I know he's attending Grand Prix Dallas later this year. Okay, cool. Hope you can make it out to San Diego. That'll be my one Grand Prix this year. Pretty yeah. excited about it. I'm guessing no, but you can always hope. You can definitely hope. It's a week after the Pro Tour. People typically stay then. Unfortunately, Vancouver and... Uh, San Diego are not particularly close to each well, other. Well, they're on the same coast. Right. That's about all they have going for them. They're also two great cities. Oh, yeah. I've not, Vancouver is on my very short list of cities that I have not gone to yet and I really want to go to. So Seattle is where I live, and it's, like my, it's my favorite city. And I oftentimes call Portland Seattle light. Mm -hmm. uh, Vancouver is Seattle heavy. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a better version of Seattle, and it is also more expensive to live than Seattle. 
Yep. It's I, I went there for a Grand Prix a couple of years ago, and it was I was just blown away. Really, really nice city. Yep. Regularly weighs in as you know the you know the Economist does you know world's most livable cities, and uh, Vancouver regularly weighs in at number one or number two. Yeah. So I I would really like to go at some point. Warsaw is on my list. Nairobi's on my list. It's a, it's a pretty short list, and Vancouver is definitely on it. My list is actually really short. Uh, the, the one place I want to go that I haven't been is New Orleans. That's that's Ooh. so far up the list. As much traveling as I've done, I haven't been to New Orleans or New York. That, that's my list. I'm going to New Orleans for Halloween this year. Well, okay. Working on my Oscar the Grouch outfit. For... <laughs> Should I prepare for to get someone else in the booth in case you don't make it out alive? New Orleans over Halloween, huh? it wouldn't. Uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> couple of non-basics to start here for both players. You see on Error's side, he's got a Blood Crypt and a copy of Sulphur Falls. For Thompson, he has a Blood Crypt and now Verdant Catacomb. So Blood Moon is in either player's deck. It does get a little bit interesting. As you mentioned, sometimes they just don't draw their fetch lands or basics. Now Aeris does play a Scalding Tarn before passing the turn back. So we'll see what ends up happening here. But we're playing this really weird game of one-upsmanship of, do you have Blood Moon? Do I have Blood Moon? On both players' side. On the other side of things is, do I have Splitters in my deck or not? I hate to be all results-oriented here. But I suspect Daryl has cut the Blood Moons. After how horrible it was <laughs> last game, maybe. <laughs> Wanted to get it out of his deck. I don't know. We got an island coming. Jerry with two fetch lands on his side of the table, two verdant catacombs. I, I think, much like game number two, we're going to be in for a little bit of a longer game here. I just don't think these games after sideboard, there, there's nothing really short about them. There's no, uh, you know, it's so hard to execute the combo that Daryl converts into a control deck. Uh, Jerry cuts a lot of his cheap cards, anticipating that the combo has gone. And so it becomes Grixis control against Jun control yep. in a slog fest. That's how the post-board games often shape up. Now, what's really interesting about the post-board games shaping up that way is if Daryl was a deck that had something like we mentioned a little bit earlier, like Mystical Teachings, yeah. or Cryptic Command or something like that, I think he'd actually probably be favored. But he's kind of, because he has to have the twin aspects of his deck, we're talking four receiver Exarchs, some number of Pestermites, and some number of Splinter Twins, he doesn't have enough room to do all of that stuff. And I, I do typically like the Grixis matchup here post-board. I think they place the control route better. But Jerry's very skilled at navigating these games, and he has a lot of action in his sideboard to fight this kind of game. The copy of Unravel the Aether gives him an answer to Keranos that a lot of journalists don't have. The two copies of Thrag Tusk is just another big, bulky threat in a game about removal spells. Requires multiple answers to be dealt with all the way. Yep. You saw Jerry's Tarmogoyf get hit by a spell snare there. That's a card I expect a real uptick on the weekend, by the way. What's your, where are, the, where, where are you looking to snare? Snapcaster Mage? Summer Bloom, Snapcaster Mage, Tarmogoyf, Dark Confidant. You got a lot of targets. Mm -hmm. If people are playing Affinity, of course, we're talking Arcbound, Ravager, Steel, Overseer, and Cranial Plating. Yeah, all the, all the hits out of the Affinity deck. Yep. You can get with Spell Snare. I'm not saying you should play four copies, but I think you should work a couple into your main deck for this particular weekend if you're playing blue. Yep. Very efficient in counter spell battles, too, against Roman, Amanda Lee. Absolutely. Both players with four lands and trying to set up a pretty good board position. Air's going to play a Steam Vincent now. There's a copy of Karanos, so we'll see if Thompson actually does have his answer there and unravel the Aether. Again, we saw one in his sideboard. You have to imagine still in his deck post board because Karanos is so common in the sideboard of these decks. Thompson got to sacrifice his Verdant Catacombs. And this card is a big vulnerability for Junless. Now, Jerry, as you mentioned, does have that answer and Unravel the Aether, but uh, Jerry right now has no board. Karanos is very powerful in a long game against a deck that's packing a lot of discard and removal. And if Jerry doesn't have his copy of Unravel the Aether, he's in some trouble. This card ain't messing around. Thompson going to search up a non-basic land. So basically at this point, it feels as though Jerry says, okay, you know what? I don't feel like you have blood moved. So or he just can't afford to play around it. Yeah, or we're past that point in the game where I even care anymore. Dark Confidant the draw. And I think that a strategic edge that Grixis has in this kind of matchup is it's always tough for Jerry to tap out for something big because of Cryptic Command. But Daryl doesn't have the same fear on the other side of the table. If the board's neutral, Daryl can just cast his stuff, and Jerry, it's much riskier for him to do that. Jerry going to play a cop of Liliana. That elevator's going to go up. Both players will be discarding here. It looks like Thompson's ready to discard a Ghost Quarter, and he will. Ares will discard a copy of Lightning Bolt, and now Tasker's on the battlefield. Well, I guess it's still in the deck. And just wildly uncastable right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Good old Blood Moon. High variance Blood Moon. I think we're going to see a lot of this this weekend. Yeah. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's truly terrible. And right now for Daryl, not castable. Actually uncastable card. You saw Karanos reveal the Blood Moon. The three damage was dealt over to the Liliana. That's why it's down to one counter at this point. Daryl looking to get busy with that Tassiger. Excuse me, Jerry looking to get busy with Tasker. Perhaps Daryl hoping to draw a Tasker. Liliana's going to go up. Time to discard. Blood Moon. Mm -hmm. Good choice. Good choice by Daryl. Yeah, some hesitation there for Jerry to use the Liliana because he knows that the, is the Blood Moon's the one going to the graveyard. Yep. Here's an Isle Spell Bomb. Jerry will cast it off of a ghost quarter. Tasks are going to come into the red zone. Looks like no copy of Go for the Throat here for errors. Does make you wonder what he's got going on in his hand. Well, there is Go for the Throat. I take it all back. He's just looking to pick a good position to cast it. Or maybe hold up Cryptic Command here sure. for some big play. Thompson going to take a look at the graveyard. Now Spellbomb, of course, can interact favorably with Snapcaster Mage, but Jerry wants to make sure that he actually gets to draw a card off of the Nile Spellbomb. So the question now is, do I want to tap out and activate Tassiger, where maybe the best I can do is return a Dark Confidant? Not too juicy to get back a Dark Confidant in the face of Karanos, but the game's going to go on for a long time. You just got to extract as much card advantage as you can. Tarmogoyf and Dark Confidant are the choices. Unsurprisingly, errors will give Thompson Dark Confidant and pass the turn back. Island is the reveal, so errors will draw that and, of course, draw another card as Karanos is really starting to get to work here. If you're Thompson, you got to find that Unravel the Aether soon. Yeah. Uh, Karanos is going to run away with this game if Jerry does not answer it very quickly. Looks like Numathum Nummy. That's Kenji Egashira. Did pick up a win this round, tweeting that Exarchan twin, yada, yada, yada. So he is yeah. two and one. It's a combination of cards that results in a win <laughs> a good percentage of the time. It typically does, yes. Because of combo deck. <laughs> Combo being short for combination <laughs> cards. <sighs> Gonna be here all day. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even think about leaving. <laughs> it's like it might be time for Dark Confidant, and it is. Jerry gonna pass the turn back. Hope that this is gonna stay for a while. Looks like Eris does have a copy of Lightning Bolt in hand, or at least he has some sort of red card. Maybe hoping that Karanos can get the job done. Looks like it can. Gotta take care of Liliana. Serum Vision is the reveal. And now here is Lightning Bolt. See you later, Dark Confidant. And Daryl actually with no interest in casting Serum Visions, maybe because he doesn't even know he's looking for it. Yeah, well, I, I, he also could just be sitting on Cryptic Command. And right sure. now he might feel like if I can counter whatever answer Jerry has to Karanos or some big play, eventually Karanos wins the game and there's no reason for me to rush. Desolate Lighthouse is the reveal to Karanos, which means that Ares will draw another card. He'll play the Lighthouse and pass the turn back. It certainly feels like Cryptic Command right now with how he's playing the game. And I like this strategy here from Daryl. If Jerry's not doing anything, he's not threatening his life total, there's nothing going on, on his side of the table, just make sure that Karano stays alive. The rest of the game will take care of itself. Fulminator Mage, the draw here for Thompson. That one's a little late to the party. Uh, it's never too late. Oops. Excuse me, land destruction guy. There's a lighthouse that's got powers, several <laughs> dual lands in play. <laughs> The reveal via Sulphur Falls. That's a target for Fulminator Mage. Yep, another target for Fulminator Mage. Jerry also just might attack for a little while here. Looks like Daryl's going to go with Serum Visions now. He will. He'll draw a card, set up the top two cards of his deck. Lightning Bolt was the draw there. Looks like cards are staying on top. Going to situate some things so that Kyrados hits for sure, probably. Uh, it's, a, it's a hit either way. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the, that card is so good, there are no misses. Yeah. Not really a big player in standard as Karanos, but quite good in modern, especially in the sideboard of these twin decks. Full enemy is going to come across for a couple points of damage here. Air is going to use his life total as a resource. Just go down to 10, pass a turn back. We'll get a reveal, and there is a remand. Going to go after Fulminator Mage. So, yeah, we're good. There's just kind of wonky interaction where Jerry actually gets the opportunity to use this full Mage at, with the reveal there. Okay. So 
these players know exactly how that does work, so no real problem there. Just a scalding turn for errors and the passing of the turn with Counter Magic at the ready. Liliana the veil to draw here for Thompson. Not going to have a huge impact on things right now, though. Yeah, Daryl is better suited to play the Liliana plus game than Jerry is right now because yep. he's drawing two cards a turn. And at this point, you know, I, I do like the way that Ares is playing this game, which is just sitting behind Karanos because eventually it's going to kill him. Yep. And if not, I'm going to have so many cards, I'll figure out a way to get you dead. And, and Daryl's probably operating under the assumption that Jerry has zero, maybe one answer to Karanos in the list. So if he's able to hold up a counter spell the whole way through, uh, Karanos goes uncontested, and that's good enough to win the game. Liliana is in. Thompson discarded Twilight Mire. Air's hand is so good he's discarding Reman. Tassiger is the reveal to Karanos. Going to bring Liliana down to one counter. And Air's going to sacrifice the fetch land here. We'll get a basic island just in case he does run into a Blood Moon later in the game, I suppose. Jerry's or his own. I have a feeling Jerry doesn't have <laughs> I have a feeling Jerry doesn't <laughs> no, have Blood I don't Moon think he's got deck. him either. Yeah. I don't think he's got him either. There is Tassiger for just one black mana. Thompson's got an answer to that, though, in Terminate. And Air's just going to let that go. No reason to fight over that. Yeah, even if Daryl could counter it, he would not, because Tassiger is not an integral part of him winning this game, and trying to keep a creature alive against Jund is challenging anyway. Abrupt Decay is the discard there for Thompson. Remand gone for Errors. Karanos will do some revealing. It'll be a swamp, which means Errors gets to draw another card. Looks like he picked up a copy of Sarah Vision, so he will cast that. He'll draw a card and now scry two. Set things up on the top of his deck. Or maybe push them both to the bottom. He'll leave one on top, one on bottom. Split the difference. Just pass the turn back over to Thompson. Inquisition of Coz like the draw to go along with the Terminate in hand for Jerry. He'll tick up. Inquisition of this card, Blood Moon. Nice. Like it. Another good choice, as there is Jace, Architect of Thought. That's the reveal to Karanos. That takes care of Liliana. And now here is Jace. Daryl's sideboard plan, it's fully going now. And, and Daryl, you can see at this point, clearly the school of thought that there's no combo here at all. Not this at all. This is a, a pure swap into a control deck. So what I, want, what I wonder, which I think is kind of interesting, you see the reveal is copy of Coligon's Command. Thompson going to take three is if you are if you're Jerry we saw him discard a Decay last turn maybe even all of those go it's it, it's tough you know the the worst case scenario is you can still kill something like you know you're gonna have Snapcaster Mages as a target sometimes these decks have a Vendillion click or two and if Daryl has any piece of the combo left bailing on the combo is just very very dangerous see Jace is taken up to its ultimate probably gonna use some of Jerry's stuff to try to win this game doesn't take much, as here's a Thought Seize. Maybe a sign for Cryptic Command. Want to protect the hand a little bit. Seems like Daryl's had this in his hand forever, and he has. So Cryptic Command's going to counter Thought Seize and draw a card. Jerry may be trying to use that discard spell to clear the path for something. Matt Sperling, a big fan of saying counter draw card whenever he blocks a shot in a pickup game of basketball. <laughs> <laughs> That's very well done. <laughs> now, Sperling's got a great sense of humor. Yeah, yeah. That's one of his better ones. I yeah. got to give him that. Really like that one. I would have incorporated myself, but I don't block a lot of shots. That's fair. If we ever, if we ever work our way into broadcasting basketball, I think we'll have to use that. Counter draw. So, yeah. <laughs> Most of the audience won't know, but for those who do, they'll, they'll certainly appreciate it. Yep. Kolingon's command got to return a Tarmogoy. That's going to get spell snared. Looks like Thompson, just two cards left in hand. Terminate and Blood Saint Mario. He'll pass the turn back. Karanos will have a trigger here. It is another copy of Karanos. Not the worst thing in the world since it does deal three. CJ is going to tick back up to six. Kolingon's command knocked that down a little bit. And Jerry has drawn the Unravel the Aether now, but he knows that there is a second Karanos in Daryl's hand. Well, not always there when you call. And actually not on time right no, now. No, this either. is not. This is definitely not on time. No, Daryl's not drawn on time. eight extra cards. Yeah. Here's the Serum Visions. A little scry action here. Split the difference, one on top, one on bottom. Jace up to seven. 
Thompson going to sacrifice a fetch land. Thin his deck out a little bit. But it might be insurmountable at this point for Thompson. Yep. Seems like a very, very hard game to get back into. There's a Lightning Bolt. There's a Snapcaster Mage. There's a Cola Guns Command. Daryl going to fire off a bunch of burn spells here at Thompson. And that is going to get the job done. Daryl Errors is going to win this match here over Jerry Thompson. Two games to one. Grixis Twin, a deck I know you would play if you were playing this tournament, is going to get the job done over Jund. And Daryl Errors will move to 3-0. Snapcaster Mage, Cryptic Command, Karanos, you can just play this card advantage game. And uh, I think game one, Twins got a pretty bad matchup against Jund. You can't execute the combo very easily. And there are some control elements to the deck, but it's rare that it's enough to actually win the game. Uh,